Alright, today I'm going to take a look at this uh, TrendNet TPL 406E, I believe it's 2K is the full bottle number on it, uh, Powerline Ethernet adapter. bought a pair of them and uh, this one has uh, died. So I uh, put in for an RMA, but uh, when all, everything came back, um, it's just not really worth it to send it in. They want it in the, uh, the box with a bunch of other stuff. So by the time I'm done, uh, it's going to cost like a good $15 to send it to them. Um, and I can buy a pair of, of these for $40, including taxes, shipping, and everything. So I'm just going to go ahead and rip this one apart instead and sacrifice it. So all these are is they just have a Ethernet port on the bottom, power there. Basically you convert between uh, your network between Ethernet to a power line uh, signal. I use this to carry the uh, our uh, network between multiple buildings here that are uh, well between the house and out buildings. And uh, like I said, this one died, so we'll see, maybe I can even just repair it myself. All right, so these uh, the blades here for the plug, they actually don't go right through. They're in there quite uh, solid, so I had to desolder uh, the two pins here from the board in order to get it out. Uh, you know, even with it all apart, that is uh, good and solid. It's not like uh, some of these uh, cheap products that you see coming out of uh, out of China that are with fake certifications and that. So that's really good build quality. And uh, I'm quite impressed here, it comes in here, and uh, I mean this is all properly designed as I'd expect from uh, a larger company. So it, uh, you know, you got the fuse here, a uh, couple of uh, current list limiting resistors, you got a uh, MOV, you've got uh, a suppression cap here uh, across the, uh, the two inputs and it is X-rated. Um, coming into the small isolation transformer and then this here will be the uh, the power supply there, the DC to DC uh, converter. Uh, as you notice it uses an inductor, it's non-isolated. Uh, they did have this isolation transformer here so you don't really need it. And on a product like this you don't need it anyways because Ethernet is all um, isolated in order to prevent ground loops as you can see on the bottom here this here is not a relay that's actually the uh, Ethernet transformer and you can see the ground plane here has been cut cut away uh, and cut back because your your Ethernet pins should never be connected in any way directly to the circuit they should be going through that uh, isolation transformer there so uh, you know it's good there but uh, yeah, I mean everything looks nice. It's uh uh you know, it looks like they use good good quality uh parts. So we have uh it looks like Athros uh chipset, another chip from Athros. I'm assuming that'll be the um the EEPROM, not a whole heck of a lot to it. Uh I'm guessing that's probably some sort of uh transceiver. Here's your I'm guessing uh filters and whatnot coming up and then you can see here cap top and bottom mounted each other uh, across from each other you can see you go in through this uh, via I can see the inside trace comes over and attaches onto this power uh, that input of the power line and this other one here comes over and connects through but on the side of the fuse um, you know, which they have to come in directly because uh, there's a pair of inductors in there for the line filtering as well. So, you know, you do have to couple 
back out. So that's why they'd have the isolation, I guess, there uh, to isolate the power supply. But your your power supply it doesn't really matter because these chips and that one, this is powered up. This is all going to be referenced in some way off of the, the mains. Um, uh, if you ever had an issue with one of these caps blowing. So, but like I said, there's no nothing that comes out. The only place that you got to watch for is with this uh, this switch here. And uh, I'm actually surprised that the housing here is connected into the ground plane and that they didn't have that um, isolated as well. I mean, that is covered. It's, you know, a longish switch that pokes out through a hole. So there's no way of contacting anything that's energized or ground and you know if you stick your finger in there it doesn't matter like I said this is not connected into the uh, the ground plane at all. all right well I started doing some probing around I started uh, at the input here and just started checking things like the fuse um, you know these resistors make sure that that uh, filter cap um, wasn't failed started checking the diodes the bridge rectifier then started just testing some of the other diodes here around on the board. I even I uh, desoldered the one leg of that one there and tested it. And I came across this package here and uh, my nose started to clear up and it's it smells like the magic smoke has come out of it as well so I'm pretty sure that this guy here uh, is the culprit but I'm not sure exactly what it is. I tried uh, four or five different uh, websites there to do uh, look up the SMD markings on it it is marked as uh, DS1 on the silk screen. Uh, DS is usually uh, for display, but obviously that's not a display. So I'm thinking that they mislabeled the diode. And it appears that it's just, uh, at first I thought maybe it was a bridge rectifier. It's got four leads. But I did a uh, test across it, and uh, on this side here, I've got a perfectly good uh, diode about... Uh, I think it was like 680 millivolt drop across it or thereabouts. And then on the top two, across these top two pins, I'm getting nothing uh, at all. So uh, I'm going to assume that that is just uh, two diodes in one package. Uh, and that one of them is gone. And that's the problem. Uh, unfortunately, uh, not being able to find the... Uh, package code anywhere. I'm not completely sure if both diodes are pointing in the same direction or if they're uh, you know back to back uh, in there so not uh, not completely sure. Uh, honestly I'm not really up on uh, how these things work. I didn't really read on how how they work. I know that they use um, you know some sort of an RF modulation scheme and you're sending RF back out through the power line. Um, but I mean I don't know the details and that and uh, I most certainly am not a uh, an expert or I actually don't really know much about RF at all it's sort of uh, one of those uh, black arts to me so uh, I'm gonna try and pop that out of there and see if I can since it's just a seems to be a standard diode it's got a regular drop across it I mean some of these diodes are not obviously they're uh, there will be high speed switching diodes and that but uh, I'm going to assume that that is probably just a small signal and I'll try replacing it with some small signal diodes and uh, see what happens I mean worst case scenario the thing blows up I guess but uh, I mean it's already not working so yeah, what the heck okay so I follow, thought I'd followed all the traces back and that wasn't leading back to another diode but apparently it was once I removed the part I tested it again and it and just the pads and there's a diode somewhere else that I was reading tested this guy here it uh, turns out it's a Zener so I pulled it and uh, checked to make sure it's obviously some sort of clamping diode it's supposed to clamp at 12 volts and it is um, other than that the only other thing I noticed is I thought this was a little isolation transformer I thought it was a bit small and uh, of course it's not it's the uh, common mode choke even though they've got a pair of uh, inductors there for filtering the input, uh, you'd still go through that common mode choke. So the uh, the power supply is uh, line referenced. It's uh, but uh, yeah, after doing 
some more poking around. I've come up pretty much uh, empty-handed. I can't figure out exactly what it is that's uh, gone. It looks like it might actually be the uh, uh, this guy here, possibly, as I'm starting to trace stuff back. Uh, checking a lot of the passes and that. I mean, it's getting into some small parts. I can't be desoldering every part to check it. A lot of them, I don't know what they are. But I also noticed here... Um, I don't know, I might have done that one removing it, but uh, or it could have blown. But there is a uh, small SMD part there, either a cap or a resistor. I'm assuming it's a cap based on the fact that it's mostly ceramic caps in that area. Um, that is gone. There's a little bit of it left, uh, minor trace. So at this point, I think I'm, I'm licked anyways. Uh, so uh, I think that's that's as far as I'm going to take it. All right, so I guess to summarize for this little uh, TrendNet uh, power line Ethernet adapter, I mean, I was impressed with the uh, the build quality in that. It looks like it was uh, it's well constructed and built. Uh, very disappointed that the thing died after three months. Um, I think I might have gotten a defective unit uh, right out of the factory. I noticed that it was a little bit hard to read the... Uh, the LEDs on it, they weren't very bright. Um, I thought that was just the way the unit was, the way they, they were designed. Um, but I see the light pipes all line up perfectly and like I said I actually got two of these. The other one is uh, stuck in behind a cabinet where I never see it. And uh, I went and pulled that out and took a look at it and noticed that the LEDs are nice and bright on it and easy to read. So leads me to believe that this unit may have had a problem uh, right from the get-go. It's kicked the bucket. Uh, I can't really say that their warranty was crappy or anything like that. Uh, they were very quick to respond uh, to the issue. Um, once I got the problem uh, submitted, the ticket opened. They came back very quickly, uh, told me how to fill out the RMA for it. And uh, like I said, the only problem is you got to pay for the shipping uh, to them and it's going to be about fifteen dollars and I found pretty sure I only paid uh, you know thirty five so I've been just under forty bucks with the tax free shipping um, for a pair of these things and uh, I found a pair of uh, instead of TrendNet now I'm getting some TP-Link ones they were on um, you know for the same price so I'm going to just replace it with that a pair of them for, for, for for the uh, forty dollars, twenty bucks for each one, uh, just not worth sending this in. So, yeah, that's about it. Until next time. <laughs>